Good morning. I gotta get this scarf together, y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Worship Wednesday. You woke up on top of the grass instead of underneath it. You in the land of the living. Praise God this morning that you made it. You completed a full day of his mercy and grace. It's hump day midweek. Glory to God for this day. Oh, I hope you guys had a wonderful Testimony Tuesday. We are now on a Worship Wednesday. Good morning, Walter. Um, and I told you, you guys, I was going to go into, um, into Proverbs 31, and we were going to talk about, are you wife material? or husband material. I think I bet y'all thought I was going to leave y'all out because I was in Proverbs 31 and I was just going to talk about the women today. I'm not going to leave the husbands out either because it's things that you need to do as well while you're searching for your wife. And also, this, this word that I have for you today is not just for people that are um, intending to be married. This, this is also instructing you on how to be as a person, right? Not just as a wife or a husband, but just as a person. Um, not everybody wants to be married, right? But for those of us who do, this can give you instructions on um, what you should be doing during your waiting season, or those of you who um, are not intending to get married, what you still should be as a person, right? Period, right? So the Bible talks of a virtuous woman, and I, I wanted to look up that word to make sure that we understand what a virtuous what, what virtuous means in the Bible. It says having or showing high moral standards. So that's why I said this word is not just for um, people that want to be married or people that um, want to be in a relationship. This is just for being a person. Period. So. But it talks about a virtuous woman, meaning having or showing high moral standards as a woman. Um, so in Proverbs 31, it defines a virtuous woman as a woman who leaves her home with integrity and discipline. All the virtues she practices are aimed at making her husband's life better, teaching her children and serving God. And these are the things that I got from. So first of all, she's trustworthy. She's wise. She's a hard worker. She's a good manager. She's she's a positive influence. She cares about her health, her family's health or her husband's health. She's faithful to God and she's a loving mother. These are the things that um, a, a person that's striving to be a wife should already be possessing. These are things, personality traits that you should already have. And I'll read them for you again. So there were eight of them. It should, you should be trustworthy. You should be wise. That mean, When it says wise, that means thinking before you speak, thinking before you act, um, using wisdom when you're um, in your actions, in your speech, right? Um, and then it says she's a hard worker. She's a good manager. She's, po she's a positive influencer. She cares about the health of herself, her family, and her husband. She's faithful to God, and she's a loving mother. So I didn't go through each. I didn't read the whole scripture. You can go and read that. But as you read that, I want you to find where these eight points are, where they um, apply to that scripture. See, I'm not going to do the work for you, right? Um, you got to do some things on your own because I need a God for speak to you just like he speaks to me. So you won't, don't just de depend on me hearing from God, but he's speaking to you too because, uh, again, God is not a uh, respect a person. The same thing he does for me, he'll do for you. So I want you to go ahead and read the scripture and think about these eight points. Um, they are also inside um, the description of the video. So if you forget what those eight points are, they are there. Or you can also put this on replay. <laughs> That helps too. Please like and share because this is going to help some people. Um, and then I also went to 1 Corinthians 7 and 34. It says an unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. So in this scripture, it's telling you 
is telling a woman what she should be doing during her season of wait, during her season of being unmarried. It's telling you exactly what you should be doing. You should be de devoting your time to God. Because guess what? When you become married, a lot of your time becomes devoted to your kids and your husband. And God understands that. So he's saying during this time, when you're not married, I should be the head of you. I should be the person that you should be devoting your time to. I should be the one who should be filling up your mind, your body, and your spirit. You should be married to me in this time, right? And, and developing our relationship so that when you do enter into a covenant with man, you're prepared for it. You know who to have at the base of it, right? You've already created a foundation for yourself, right? And so... Um, and, and I know y'all thought I forgot about the men. I was like, Lord, I know you ain't just talking about the women. I know you didn't just want us prepared for marriage. There's some things that the men got to do too. So the Lord brought me to Titus 2 and 2. Um, so we're going to go to Titus 2 and 2 and Titus 2 and 6. Again, these scriptures are also in the description of the video. So if you miss any of this um, and you do want to go ahead and read it on your own, it is there. Um, again, you can put it on replay. You can like and share. Please do that for me. Um, so Titus 2 and 2, it says, teach the older man to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. So this is him talking to the older men. He has something for the younger men too. Titus 2 and 6, it says, similarly, encourage the young man to be self-controlled. Why is that word self-control mentioned to the older and the younger? Hey, you guys have a great day. Love y'all. Thank you. Um, so that was my question. Lord, why do you have to tell the old and the young man both to be concerned with self-control? Um, I think God knew that when men were going to have a problem. Thank you, baby. When men were going to have a problem with their self-control, especially when all these women are walking around with all these attributes and they're even enhancing them, that men were going to have a problem with self-control. So he, he gives this to the old man and to the young. And he says um, that they both should have self-control, right? And they, they should be worthy of respect. Um, and then he said, and to live wisely, they must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. He said, he, he's telling this to men, right? He, not to women. I, I would expect him to be saying to be, have love and patience to the women because we're nurturers. We're the ones that have to deal with patience and all that. Right. But he's telling this to the men. You must be filled with love and patience. So these two, I was like, okay, God, I, I appreciate you sharing this with me because that makes sense to me, right? That makes sense to me um, that you didn't just have instructions for the women. You had it for the men too. So during his search of his wife, this is what he should be working on. He should be working on self-control. And again, understand that self-control is not something that you're going to just be able to do. Believe me, you only going to be able to do this with God. God is the only one that's going to be able to give you the self-control and restraint that you need in order to move forward um, in this world. Like I said, this world we live in is um, highly sexualized, right? The women are enhancing um, areas that they know are going to entice men. This is nothing but the trickery of the enemy. The enemy knew that God had told the man to practice self-control. So he was like, hey, how can I trip them up? Let me make the thing that they're searching for, the thing that they're going after, be more enticing so that they can lose their self-control. So men, I want you to really think about that. Think about um, what you're being attracted to. Are you being attracted to a woman because of what she possessed as a virtuous woman? Or are you being attracted to the things, the attributes that she has on the outside, the, those things? Are you losing your self-control? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, so then I also found another uh, scripture, which I didn't put in the, um, into the, um, description but I thought it was good because I thought about David too because David had a problem with self-control David had a problem with that remember he committed adultery he committed murder in order to keep that that wife um, in order to keep the woman that he wanted um, he killed her husband so he had a problem with self-control so I was like what does David have to say about this 
And David tells us, you know, that this, this can trip us up. He says, how can a young man stay on the path of purity? He said, how can a young man stay on a path of purity? He said, by living according to your word. That's the only way that you can stay on the path of purity, living according to the word of God. He said, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. He's asking God, please don't let me stray from your commands. Please don't let me stray from what you command me to do. Because if I do, I'm going to lose self-control. If I do, I'm not going to be pure. I'm going to be thinking of things that is not of you, God, if you don't make sure that I stay in alignment with your word. So um, David is letting you know that you can't do this by yourself. You're not going to be able to do this alone. What's this stuff here when I came down? Hmm? Oh, you wouldn't know your face was in, in your phone. Uh, so, yeah, today we're talking about are you wife material or are you husband material and i i really uh went deep into that because i wanted to know like lord do i display these things that the bible talks about you know am i trustworthy i was like i got that checked am i wise i'm working on it <laughs> am i a hard worker i got that checked Am I a good manager? I'm checked on that. I really have been working on making sure I manage my household. I manage my budget, right? I, I make sure I manage my time. I'm very good at doing those things. Um, are you a positive influence? I hope that I am. You know, I, I, I strive to be. That's the reason for these lives. I want to make sure that I'm a positive influence on the, the community that I'm within. Um, do I care about my health? Yes, I do. I care about my children's health. I make sure they take vitamins every day. I take vitamins. I make sure um, that we're eating healthy. Like, we don't eat um, beef. We don't eat um, pork. You know, those type of things. I'm working on going totally vegan. It's been kind of hard for me because I love chicken <laughs> and turkey. So, I'm working on it. Um, and seafood is my thing. Um, so, I'm working on it. But... Uh, for the most part, we're pretty healthy, right? And she said, is she faithful to God? I was like, God, I got that check. You know, every day I'm fighting with the faithfulness, but so far I'm doing pretty good on that. And is she a loving mother? I have to ask my kids, do they think I'm a loving mother? For the most part, they say yes. Some days when I'm yelling and disciplining them, they might not agree. But for the most part, I'm a loving mother. So I'm like, I'm already in a place where I'm prepared to be a wife. Right. And those this is what I want us women to do. When you read the scripture, I want you to see is are, is your life aligning with what God says about what a virtuous woman should be. This is how you know if you're prepared for marriage. If there's things in there that you may be like, well, you know what? I'm really not doing that. That's really not something I'm doing. You have to do all eight of these to be prepared for marriage. Right. So if there's something in here that you are not lining up with, this is your time to talk to God. OK, God, um, grow me up in this area. Bring me to a place where I'm hitting this mark too, so that I can be prepared to be a wife. If and if again, like I said, if that's not your intentions, if you don't want to be a wife, still this is giving you an example of how you should be as a person, right? And that that's the time for you to talk to God. Okay, God, work on me in this area. How do I get to this point so I am an example of a virtuous woman? Um. Oh, sorry. Have a great day. Love you. You're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you on the flip side. See you on the flip side. Right. Don't let nobody get you on your nerves today. And what I tell you about people that send me your messages. What? Block their energy. Nah, because I know some people going to try to get into some fights with me today over what I said. Mm -mm. Lay them hands like this. <laughs> that I definitely gonna hit me. They gonna be like, she just touched me. <laughs> oh, you gonna be all right, baby. I love you. I'ma pray for you. Pray for you going there. All right. Um. Good morning, Brandon. Um, and so then we were talking about the women, right? So we were saying what you need to do. I'm sorry, something in my eye. It's like something always jumps in my eye. Okay. Oh, 
lost it. It was the eyelash, y'all. Okay, I got it. So we were talking about women um, and how you know if you're prepared to be a wife. And I gave you eight points. Again, those points are in the description um, if you need um, to, to get those uh, eight points again. Um, please like and share this because, again, like Walter said, much needed word in the world we live in today. This is something we really need. Um, a lot of people don't know this. And it's like... And I'm not going to even lie to you. I knew of it in the Bible, but I had never really read it, right? I never really, I'm going to be honest with you. I never really read it. Like, I just assumed that I was prepared to be a wife. I just assumed because I had the heart of servitude. I had the heart of, um, of wanting to be married, right? Right. So I just assumed that I was prepared for that. I never even read this scripture right here that tells me exactly what um what lets me know if i'm ready for that that step right if i'm ready if i'm preparing myself if I, if when a man finds me if i'm walking as a wife like i never even thought about that <laughs> he said you all right when it comes to being positive <laughs> okay and then um and then when I read uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 34, how he talked about um, what I should be doing during this time, when he was telling me that I should be concerned with the Lord affairs, right? I never even read these things. So all of this was new information for me, and I'm sharing it with you because I know that this is needed right now. I know many people, especially in this world right now where everything is so sexualized, we so comfortable with dating. This lets you know you shouldn't even be dating. If you're not married, you should not even be dating. You should be co concerned with your father's business. You should be concerned with your relationship with God. You shouldn't be out there dating. Women should not be dating. I'm sorry. I know you probably don't want to hear it and you feel like it's probably sexist. And But I'm telling you what the word of God says. That we sh you, when you're not married, if you're not married or you're a virgin... You should be concerned with the Lord affairs. That should be what you should be aiming for. Your aim should be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. So you shouldn't even have time to be doing other things, other doing other things. And the man should be searching for you. He should be searching. See, one of the things that I've always looked for when you know I dated somebody, if we broke up, right? If we ended our relationship. You know, because a lot of times people go back and forth. They, but if, if during this time we break up and right after our breakup, you in another relationship, that lets me know that I should not reconnect with you because you have no self-control. I was never the one, one for you. To me, the man that I marry, I want me to be the only choice. I don't want him to have other choices. I don't want him to have other women lined up. I don't want him to be right after he out of relationship with me, he jumping on to the next one. I don't, I don't want a man like that. I want a man that thinks that I am the only choice, that I was God sent to him right that he didn't have another choice that the only way that he was going to be able to be happy was with me i'm sorry that's just me that's just me because i know when i'm in a relationship with somebody um that's how that's how i feel i can't just jump into a relationship with somebody else i just can't do it like even when i broke up with my um my two oldest kids dad when i broke up with him I didn't get in a relationship for two years because I didn't want to just jump into something else. And I, I was waiting to see, okay, would this work out? What, what, what is this? And this is my kid's father. I'm not going to be somebody else's baby mother. No. Two years went by. I was like, you know what? I'm good. and go I'm gone. I'm done. I'm over it, right? I've done it. And then even in um, the other relationships that I was in, like I, I didn't just jump into something. I didn't just move on to something. That was just like... I just couldn't do it you know what I mean like I had to be like let me make sure that um, I'm not just jumping into something or let me make sure that I'm not just moving on emotions that I'm not ending this relationship based on my emotions that this is truly um, over like right um, and even now like I just got out of a relationship and you know people in my inbox people messaging me people texting me like let's go on a date let's do this let's do that and I'm just like okay um, really not there yet like mm, I'm not ready to move to that point yet. Um, I'm still working on me. I'm still working on this alone time that I have with God. I'm enjoying this alone time with God, right? So 
And I have to, and the Bible also tells you to govern your heart. This is what you're doing when you are um, taking that time to heal from past relationships. You're governing your heart, right? Um, and then, again, we talked about, the Bible talks about what the men should be doing during their search. When they're searching for their wife, if they haven't met her yet, God tells them to um, exercise self-control, right? To exercise self-control while you're looking for your wife. Why does God tell you that? Because he know what's going to trip you up. He know what he put on women. <laughs> he know how, how beautiful he made us. He know that. And he know what the enemy is trying to do. So he tells you first, practice self-control. When you're looking for your wife, practice self-control. And this is what I'm talking about when I said, I don't want to be with somebody that just jump into relationship after relationship. That, that tells me that you have no self-control, right? And then he tells them to be worthy of respect and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Let me tell you something. That's a, that's the trait that a lot of men don't have. They have that patience when it comes to their children. I see a lot of men with their children, they have they exercise great faith. I ain't gonna lie, they got way more faith. I mean, not faith, uh, patience. They got way more patience than mothers. I see a lot of fathers that can sit there and let the kid jump all over their head, do all type of stuff, and they just sit there just enjoying it, right? Not doing nothing. Let the kid jump all over them, hit them, everything, and they not doing nothing. They just practicing that, that, that peace, that patience. They have it, but when it comes to their wife. Or when it comes to whoever they're dating, that patience goes out the door. <laughs> out the door. It's gone. And I think it's very important that God instructed the men that during this time that they're searching for their wife, that they should be filled with love and patience. I think that's very important to know. Because at first I was thinking, okay, Lord, I, I would have thought you would have gave this commandment to the wives. Right? But I think that's not something that we struggle with. Right? I think that's not something that we have a problem with. Men, when it comes to your wives, when it comes to your, your, your mates, are you practicing love and patience when it comes to you courting the wife that you want? Are you practicing love and patience? Right? I don't think he was talking about with the children. I think he was talking about as you're searching for your wife. Are you practicing um, love and patience are you filled with it right and then David goes on to tell you that the only way you're going to be able to do that is by living according to the word of God right and he asks God do not let me stray from your commandments praise God this word was good thank you Lord so I, today I want you guys please like and share I have to keep telling you guys I keep forgetting to tell you that but please like and share because we have to get people on these lives we have to get them on here so they can hear what God is saying what because um, the things that he's saying to me is very important and it's really teaching me how to live how to be right in this world that is giving me total total misinformation total misinformation I we before I started really reading the Bible and getting in the word I thought that how I was living was right I'm not going to lie to you, but I thought how I was living was right because it's what the world was doing. It's what everybody else around me was doing. Then when I got into this word, I got to build in my relationship with God. God was picking apart everything I thought, <laughs> every perspective I had built my life on. That's why God talks about transformation. Walking this walk this, um, has you having a total transformation of the mind because God has to pick out what the world has taught you. He has to re-transform you. He has to re, um, reprogram you to think according on the word of God instead of on the word of the world. And the enemy is very good at deceiving you into believing that what you believe or what you see is truth. Praise God. He, glory to God. Hallelujah. He has so much because right now we're thinking, like when I was saying I'm dating, um, and I'm thinking that's that's okay because the world says you it's okay to date. 
you know, they just told me that you shouldn't be sleeping around, you know, but it's okay to date and look for men. It's okay to do that. The Bible tells us clearly a woman should not be dating. This is what she should be doing during her time. First Corinthians 7 and 34, while you're waiting on your husband, it says an unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about her Lord, the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. So what you are to be doing while you're waiting on your husband is devoting yourself to God. You're not supposed to be out here dating. You're not supposed to be out here in the club looking for some man. This is why you keep ending up in these reckless relationships because you're looking for the man. And you might be like, I'm not looking for no man. When you go out there getting dressed and you going out to the club, you ain't looking for no girl. <laughs> that, that's not what you're doing. You're not out there trying to meet no woman unless that's what you're looking for unless and i'm not even if that's the case if you're looking for a mate i'm gonna say that because i'm not against anybody what you do what you do is what you do like that ain't got nothing to do with me you could take that up with the lord I, my only job is to tell you what god says to me that's the only thing that i am to do and i'm not to condemn or judge nobody so but when you get up and go dr get dressed and you you're going out to the club you're not going out to just go out you're going out because you're looking for something right and this, the Bible was telling you that you are not to be going out looking for something. You are supposed to be spending your time when you are unmarried. You're supposed to be spending your time getting closer to God. And guess what? God already promised if you if you seek me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. So if the desires of your heart is to be married, he's going to give you the husband that he has prepared for you. So you don't even have to go out there and look. Your husband is already looking for you. Praise God. God, praise your God. He already has a husband looking for you. You ain't got to do nothing but seek him. But get in, in, into alignment with his word. God has already had everything you need. He's already made provisions for everything that you need. He's already set it up. It's already made up for you. Or one, all you got to do is ask for it. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. He said a man that, um, um, a man that asks, I have not, right? So praise God, praise God. Please like and share this. I know that this is so important. A lot of people need to hear that. Um, oh, he said, don't forget 1 Corinthians 13 is also important. That's the one about love, right, um, Walter? That's the one about love. I just want to make sure. Um, so Walter says, oh, good morning, um, Barbara. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I feel you. I'm selfish. I want her all to myself. I refuse to share, right? Well, sir, that's that's me too. I'm selfish when it comes to my uh my mate. I'm real selfish. Now that I get to be selfish on, I'm not sharing it with nobody. Well, I will share them with the kids. <laughs> I'll share them with the kids. That's about as far as that I'm gonna share, right? I'll share them with his family, but I'm not sharing them with another woman. I'm not sharing them with nothing else except for what God commands me to share to share him with it, and that's family. God talks about how important family is. I, I was listening to that to, this morning um, as I was in my prayer time, and he was talking to me about how important family is, how um, the enemy knows what he placed on families and this is why we have we have such a struggle with our families why some of us so many of us be like i'm done with my family i wash my hands of them i don't want nothing to do with them they treat us dirty like they we have all these quotes about how bad family is and this is the enemy planting seeds to create division and destruction in what god created god created family because he knew that you were going to need some people to support you along the way so he placed you in a family. Is the family perfect? No. But guess what you're learning while you're dealing with family on how to deal with people outside of the family. How can you love somebody when you don't want to? Right? Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you so much for my family. Um, he said, man, that temptation ain't no joke. <laughs> Every day at work, I'm like, Jesus, help me. Right? Well, so I'm there too. I had those moments. I had those moments. Um... He who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor. That part. That's it. And finds favor. I forgot about that too. I wanted to talk about that too. Um, that it also says, at the end part, he says, um, he finds favor. I think we talked about that yesterday. That when you find a wife, you find favor with God. You found favor. Do you know what it, what it means to find favor with God? Hallelujah, I want to do my praise dance on that. Will you find favor with God? Oh 
Oh my God. I you you don't know what that means when you find favor with God. Like I don't I don't care about favor with men. I don't care because you know what? Once I find favor with God, I already got favor with men. Everything comes with that. God has oh hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So today we talked about are you are you prepared? Or I'm sorry, are you wife material or are you husband material? And I gave um, descriptions on what scriptures to read to let you know if you're prepared for that position. Right. If you're prepared to be a wife, if you're prepared um, to be a husband, so many times we do it backwards. Right. We get married and then try to prepare to be a wife or we get married and then try to prepare to be a husband. Like God says, you should already be prepared. You should already be a wife when he finds you. You should already be prepared to be a husband when you are looking for your wife. This is what you should be doing while you're looking for your wife before you even begin the search for your wife. This is what you should be doing. So that you, when you get connected to your wife, you're already healed and ready to, to lead her. Right? You're already ready to lead her. And she's ready to follow. Right? She's ready to follow. Because she's in a place, she's prepared herself to be a wife. You prepared yourself to be a husband. This is a preparation. You don't just jump into marriage. You don't just go into marriage just because um, I love you. Mm -mm. So many people, oh, I love him. He's my soulmate. He completes me. <laughs> Hold up. First of all, <laughs> that's not how marriage works. That's why so many of are destroyed and ending in divorce right now because you didn't get married or planted on the right reason. You didn't get married planted on the right foundation. First of all, nobody should complete you. When you get into a relationship, you should already be complete. Right? This is why God says when you find a wife, you already a wife. You already completed when he meets you. This is why God gives instructions to men on what you should do before you searching for your wife. You should be trustworthy. You should be worthy of respect. Right? You should be filled with love and patience. These are things you should have before you even start the search for your wife. I don't want nobody broken. My husband doesn't want anybody broken. And that's what a lot of times of the marriage is, is in, in divorce because we got to spend the first couple of years of the marriage trying to fix what somebody else broke. Trying to fix each other. Because we didn't come into the relationship whole. We didn't come into the marriage whole. We're spending most of our time trying to fix each other. And sooner or later, it gets to the point where you like, this is too broken. I'm done. And because we spent so much time dating, moving from relationship to, to relationship to relationship, we've learned, we've trained ourselves on how to quit, on how to let go, on how to wash our hands of something. This is what dating has taught us that, hey, if I don't like something, I can just move on. And that's not what God intended for us. Man, when you look at the trickery of the enemy, when God opens your eyes, you like, what? <laughs> I can't believe I believe that stuff. What? <laughs> Dang, God. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for me no longer being blind. Thank you for the spit <laughs> that you put on my eyes. You, you remember that in the Bible where God spit on the man's eyes and he was able to see? Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to see the error in my wrong. That I'm no longer walking blind. Oh my God. Glory to God. Good morning, Terrell. Praise your God this morning. Praise your God that he doesn't leave you blind. That he doesn't leave you following um, the deceit or deception of the enemy. Praise your God for that. Praise your God that you can enjoy being by yourself. You can enjoy your alone time because you know that whatever God has for you is for you and that he's preparing somebody for you. He already has your mate looking for you. This is for my women. And he already has the men ready. You know, he already has that wife prepared for you. This is for the men. So praise your God. 
take your time this morning to just tell God, thank you. Praise him on Worship Wednesday. This is what we're doing. We're praising God. We're telling God we want to just tell you thank you in case we missed it today. In case we didn't see what you were doing, we want to tell you thank you today. Praise your God. Hallelujah. I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a worship phase this morning, y'all. I'm ready to worship because I was like, God, I thank you so much for giving me revelation of this word, of teaching me how to be a woman of God, how to love according to how you told me, how you ordained me to love, how to date according to how you told me to date, that I'm no longer doing it the way the world has told me to do it or how um, the enemy has deceived me into believing it should be done. You've now given me the truth. God, the Lord said, I am the truth and the life. And I'm thanking him for the truth. Again, I want y'all to please like and share this. Please like and share. Let people know how how God is um, revealing the truth to us. How he's teaching us the trickery of the enemy. So once you become woke, once you really become woke. So many people walking around here, I'm woke, I'm woke. No, you're not. The enemy has really deceived you into believing lies. And they've made, they dressed them up and included just a little bit of truth, just a little bit of truth for so you can believe that it is from God. And it's not. When I start reading these words, and I'm telling you, this word is from God himself, it's from the Holy Spirit. When I started reading this, I was like, oh, praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that I'm no longer blind. He said, man, please, they be in lust, not in love. Most people have no idea what love is. Yes. Um, Barbara says this is a good word. Thank you, Barbara. Please like and share you guys for me. Please like and share for me. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and get into prayer because that's what we are here for. So, um, and I'm, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm not late. I'm on time. I forgot I got a late day. So, um, our father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Heavenly Father, we come before you as humble as we know how, Lord God, asking you to first forgive us of our sins, cast those sins into the lake of forgiveness, never again bringing it to your attention or mine. P Father, we ask that you place forgiveness in the hearts of those who we may have sinned against, Father God. Take away the spirit of offense, Lord God. Help us to move on in the spirit of forgiveness, Lord. Lord God, I ask you this morning, Lord God, that you train us to be um, wife material, that you train us to be husband material, Lord God, and we can't do it with you without you lord god lord god reveal your truth to us teach us your ways lord god uh, remove any deceitful or uh, deception that has been planted in us lord god any seed that is from the enemy any weed that is from the enemy lord god uproot it father god teach us your commandments teach us your will and your way lord god prepare us to be the woman that you ordained us to be prepare us to be the man that you ordained us to be father Prepare us to be the wives that you ordained us to be. Prepare us to be the husbands that you ordained us to be, Lord God. You had a purpose for every plan, every person in, on this life, Lord God. And I ask that you speak into them their purpose, Lord God. You speak into them what you have for them, Lord God. You touch them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, Lord God. Removing any and all things from them that is not of you, God. Lord God, I thank you for removing the spirit of divorce, Lord God. That you touch families, unite families back together, Father God. In the name of Jesus, speak to wives, speak to husbands, Lord God. Allow them to hear your voice. Allow them to hear where you're taking their families, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, as for me and my house, Lord, we will worship you, Lord God. We will honor you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I ask these prayers and blessings. Name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So guess what, you guys? I love y'all. It's nothing you could do about it. God loves you more. So just accept that and move on. Have a wonderful and blessed worship Wednesday. Um, take time out today just to give God honor and praise. Just to give him thankfulness. Just to tell him that you love him. Today is just a day of worship, you guys. Just today for you to just let God know that you are um, in love with him, right? You're in love with him. Like you want to do his will and his ways. So use today, use today, Worship Wednesday as your day to just give God honor and thanks. So um, if God willing, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your day. Bye.